to light the product shot in a dramatic fashion suitable for advertising or marketing, we'll use a traditional triangle or three-point lighting setup. That consists of a key light, which is the dominant or primary source of illumination that casts visible shadows, one or more fill lights to fill in those shadows, and one or more rim or back lights to illuminate the edges of the subject and differentiate its silhouette from the background. To begin, let's turn off the sky dome that we created earlier for the purposes of material look development. Select that sky dome. Go over to the Modify panel. In the general rollout at the top, under Light Properties, there's a switch to turn the light on or off. So let's turn off illumination. Now let's do an interactive production rendering of our camera view. In order to prevent the Arnold render view from automatically switching to the active viewport, we're going to lock the render view. So give focus to the camera view. Open up the render setup dialog. In the view to render area next to the pull down list, click the padlock icon. And now the Arnold render view won't automatically switch viewports. Close the render setup dialog. With focus on this physical camera view, initiate an Arnold interactive rendering. Go ahead and click interactive production rendering. And we'll see that at first all we get is a green square. That's the emissive material that I've assigned to the power light on the radio. Let's now create a spotlight, which is appropriate for key lighting. Go to the Create panel, to Lights. From the pull-down list, choose Arnold, and click the button labeled Arnold Light. But before we create the light, let's take a hard look at the settings here in the Create panel. Notice that the light is disabled, and it's of the type Sky Dome. A newly created Arnold light will inherit all of its starting parameters from the most recently selected Arnold light. Now this can create some confusion, so be on the lookout for that. The mere fact that we selected the Sky Dome and disabled it means that the next light we're going to create will be a disabled Sky Dome. And of course that's not what we want, so let's turn the light on and we'll change the type over to Spot, which is suitable for a key light. Now we can create that light in the top viewport. Click in the lower right of the top viewport and drag towards the subject, release the mouse, and then right click to exit light creation. And we see something in our Arnold render view here. Let's go back to the Modify panel and let's scroll down a little bit in the Color Intensity section. Very importantly, there's a switch labeled Normalize Energy. That's going to preserve the total amount of illumination regardless of the size or area of the light. So up here we have the radius. That's controlling the size of the light. But as long as Normalize Energy is on, then this radius amount will only affect the softness and will not affect the total amount of illumination. Let's turn Normalize Energy off. And then as we adjust the radius, we'll see we're increasing or decreasing the amount of light. We're also seeing a reflection of the radius of that light here in the glass. Let's set the radius to 10 centimeters. We've also inherited the exposure value from that sky dome. So let's increase the exposure down here to a value of 7. And we can position that light. We'll grab the Move tool. It'll need to be moved up off the ground plane. So select that light and move it up in the left view. And we can also move the target up a little bit. I've got some values that I know are going to work, so we can plug those in. I'll select the light, and we'll give it an X position value of 27. Press Tab and give it a Y position of negative 30. Press Tab and give it a Z position of 43 centimeters. And that looks pretty good for the light position. We can also move that target more precisely. We'll set the target's X position to 0, the Y position to negative 3, and the Z position to 7 centimeters. That looks pretty good for the light position. Let's go back to its parameters, select it, and in the Modify panel, we'll see we have Cone Angle and Penumbra Angle. Cone Angle, as the name indicates, is the angle of the cone, or the area that is illuminated. And lower values will give us a tighter beam. So for example, we can set that to 10 degrees. Then the penumbra angle is the softness of the edge. So if we reduce that penumbra angle to zero degrees, then we get a very hard edge there. 
Well, actually, the values that we had by default were working, so we can set those back. We can set the cone angle to 60 degrees and the penumbra angle to 5 degrees. One more little tweak that we might want to do is to change up the lens radius. That controls the focus or collimation. A higher lens radius value will cause the rays of light to be more parallel. So if we increase that lens radius, we'll start to see a change over here. The effect that is achieved is one of higher contrast. With a high lens radius, the rays of light are more parallel, which leads to less diffuse scattering and sharper specular highlights. Let's set the lens radius to a value of 10 centimeters. All right, so that's pretty good for our key light. Let's rename it here. We'll call it key spot. We'll also need a fill light so we can duplicate the light that we have. With the move tool still active, we can go over to our top viewport, right click so we don't lose our selection, hold down the shift key and drag to create another light. Don't be alarmed if you see a performance hit when the Arnold render view is running. In the clone options dialog, it'll be a copy. Let's rename it. We'll call it fill disk and click OK. So this new light is going to be of the type disk. So let's change that type to disk. And so we can isolate its effects from the key light. Select that key light and just temporarily turn it off. So back to our fill light. We've got the type disk with a radius of 10 centimeters and a spread of one. Radius is the size. Spread is the focus. It's very similar to the lens radius of the spotlight. Let's bring the radius up to 30 centimeters. Because normalized energy is turned off, that's going to increase the overall amount of illumination. Let's bring the spread down. If we reduce this down to a value of zero, then we get very hard edged illumination. Let's set the spread to 0.4. Okay, let's fine tune the position of that fill light. We'll set the X position value to negative 36, the Y position to negative 30, and the Z position to 40 centimeters above the ground plane. We'll also want to adjust the exposure. We inherited an exposure of seven from that spotlight. Let's bring this way down. If we bring it down to a value of zero, it's looking pretty dim, but that actually might be a good value. Let's re-enable our key light and see what we get. Turn the key light on, reselect the fill light, and we can turn it on and off to see what we're getting there. And in fact, the exposure of zero may actually be too much. I'm getting a little bit too much light there. I'll bring it down to negative one. Okay, now we've got our key and fill lights, two components of the triangle lighting setup.